Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. I have a lot of new print projects in the works, but sometimes they can take a little while to finish. So I've been spending some time in between using my new shop tool, and I thought I'd give a little bit of background on setting it up and a few of the upgrades I made before I post the videos of the CNC in use. And I'll be posting those in the coming weeks. This machine was given to me by my old studio mate who didn't use it anymore. It's in really good condition, but it needs a little bit of work. It's a full spectrum brand CNC engraving machine from back when full spectrum used to make these machines. Nowadays, you can find countless cheap imported versions of this machine all over the internet. The machine's pretty loud and can really kick up a lot of dust. So the first order of business was to make an enclosure for it. And I just made this cheaply using two by fours and plywood. Looking back at the design, I probably should have given myself a couple more inches around the machine, but it fits fine and the footprint's pretty small in my studio. Now after using this for a few months, I found the plywood resonated a lot and I decided to upgrade the enclosure. So I glued and then screwed MDF panels on all sides and this really deadened the whole thing. And then the final step was to add in some sound absorbing foam on the inside. And so after all this, you can stand right next to it while it's carving wood and carry on a conversation without any problems. And of course, I needed somewhere to put all the end mills and collets that I have for it. So I 3D printed this small holder. And you can see a couple of the projects I've made on this machine so far behind it. Now onto the machine upgrades itself. The main linear bearings on the bottom had a significant amount of slop in them. Both the bearing itself and the bearing holder around them. And you can see here how much the base moves with just rocking the machine back and forth by hand. So I ordered a new set of linear bearings off eBay, and then I cut a slot in the bearing blocks. This allows the blocks to clamp down onto the linear bearing, and it takes out that excess play that was in the block. And next up was trying to solve why I kept breaking engraving bits and end mills. So it turns out the motor and the shaft had a significant amount of runout. The collets permanently attached to the shaft, so I couldn't just replace that. And you can see how out of whack the whole thing is here. And obviously the motor ran fine, but it's not usable in this state. For the replacement, I ordered a quiet cut spindle from Inventables. But it looks like they stopped selling that motor now. But regardless, the runout's almost completely gone, and the max speed on this motor is just scary fast. Now the last step before using the machine again was to make up a touch plate holder. For those unfamiliar, each end mill you load into the machine, you need to set the Z-axis position so the software knows where the end of the tool is in space and relative to the part that you're going to be machining, since every tool is a different length or installed further or less into the collet. So a small metal disc with a known thickness completes a circuit when the tip of the tool moves down and touches it. This offset value is stored in the software. I thought the plastic base that this touch plate came with was pretty boring, so I decided to make a little homer. So after all that, a little bit of test cutting and we're good to go. For the software, I'm doing all my modeling and cam paths in Fusion 360, which is free for hobbyists and small businesses. And then I'm using Mach 3 to run the G-code on the actual machine from a dedicated laptop. So I'll go ahead and wrap up this video here. Let me know if you have any questions or topics that you wanna see related to this. 
and I'll try to cover them in my upcoming CNC router videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help support this channel, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page, where I post behind the scenes photos as well as other patron rewards. Thanks!